To better understand control flow, it can be useful to think of programming like a factory assembly line. Each line of the program, or statement, is like a step on the assembly line and is executed in sequence. Here, a single variable a is declared and then assigned the value of 5. Now box A moves down to another machine. The variable A is assigned the value 3. Let's follow this A variable as it continues down the conveyor belt. We have come to a fork in the path. One of the paths has code on it and the other does not. This is an if statement. We use if statements when we have a portion of code that we only want to run when a specific condition is met. The condition for this if statement is if a is equal to 3. If this condition is true, it will send us down path 1 with the additional code. If it is false, it will send us down path 2, which contains no code. Since our a variable contains the number 3, the condition is met, so the box goes down path 1. In this case, the extra code changes our a variable to a 4. If our variable was not 3, however, we would have been sent down path 2, skipping the extra code entirely. Now it seems we've come to another split in the conveyor belt. This time there is extra code on both tracks. This is an if-else statement. An if-else statement is used when we want one section of code to be run if a certain condition is true and another different section of code to be run if that same condition is false. A is equal to 4 at the moment so we do not meet the conditions and are sent down path 2. If this was a regular if statement, this would mean we skip the conditional code. However, an if-else statement provides a section of code to run for a false outcome as well as a true outcome. And so we run the false outcome code, the code reaches a equals a plus 1, and a is incremented once, becoming 5. Now we've come to a more complicated fork in our path. This looks like an if-else-if statement. We use such statements if there are several alternate code paths we want to run under specific conditions. The first condition here is if a is not equal to 5. If this condition is true, we are sent through the top path as normal. But if it is false, rather than just taking another path, we are sent through to the next condition check. Since a is 5, the condition is false, and we are sent to the second condition check. This condition is else if a is less than 10. As before, if the condition is true, we are sent down the first path, and if it is false, we are sent down the second. a is less than 10, so we are sent down path 2, running the section of code contained in it. a has another 5 added to it, so the variable finally contains the value 10. Let's take a look at a hypothetical now. What if a had been equal to 4 when it reached the if-else-if if statement? Both the if condition and the else-if condition are true. Even though both conditions are true, we check the if condition first, and if it is true, we take a path that completely skips the else-if check, meaning that in this case, we take path 1. Finally, we should look at combining these different types of if statements. There's no limit to how many else ifs we can add to the end of an if statement, each one adding a new requirement to be checked if the one before it is false. For example, we can have a statement like this. We can also add an else to the end of any if statement, allowing for a section of code that will run if every single requirement resolves as false. 